All right, YouTube, Repo Man 64. 102 temperature. I've literally been stuck in the bed for three days. This is my first day up and moving. It was rough. <clears throat> I'm going to go as long as I can. If I can go long enough, I'll upload this to the cloud and uh, turn it into a live which means it'll be playing something I've already done, uh, but I'll be able to be in the chat room at the same time to answer questions, which I think is really important. Uh, when we say stuff that uh, we can back it up or explain why we say what we say. Okay, so while I was laying there in and out of consciousness, <laughs> it was a rough one. This was... This was the flu. Like, I mean, I've had the flu before, but my my whole body hurts. I'm afraid I'm going to go into a coughing uh, spree here and I won't be able to finish. So, um, or not be able to stand. My back hurts just standing here. But I really want to uh, talk about this because we are getting very close to the rapture. Um, yeah, we've been saying it for a long time, but... Uh, Remember, we're all part of the body. It's super important to not put yourself on some kind of pedestal and think that you have all the answers and everyone else is a fool. Uh, that's silly. The eyes do not know what a steak tastes like, and the mouth does not know what a steak looks like. We're all part of the body. We all have a piece of that puzzle. Uh, most of my uh, research has been on those dates that we find in the Bible and where to apply them on a timeline. And that's where I stick to my strengths. Um, I look at other channels all the time because they might see something that I don't see or find a date that I did not know about. We're in the secret broadcast cave with bats. That's bat sounds. That's not a pump. <laughs> and, uh, so I, I feel, I always have felt it's super important and that everyone has so much to offer and to ignore anyone. And here's the thing. Some of them say some really out there stuff. And I'm just like, that's wrong. But then they say something else that's right. And the reason that is, is because we're to use discernment and understand. I will disagree with somebody that says the tribulation is only three and a half years long. However, I won't discount their entire channel because they love the Lord. They're dreaming of his return. They're searching for it. That is salvation. That is the very definition of wanting his return. Please, Lord, come back. We're, we're looking for you. We don't have all the answers, but together we do. Chuck Missler was amazing. He was one of the most amazing preachers, and I still go back and listen to his stuff, his videos. But I can't stare into something like it's going to attack it. I just don't know what it's staring at. Hopefully it's not coming this way. She's really intent on it, too. Tick, what are you looking at? Tick, she doesn't know where I am. Okay, so. Amazing guy, right? Can't can't say anything bad about the guy, but he didn't have all of the information. Look, there's people I've seen that are brand new to this who have been studying this stuff for a year uh, and have come up with some really amazing things. And the reason that is is because the Holy Spirit's giving us these pieces of information. He's not going to give it all to one person to tell everyone. He's going to give it to all of us, a piece of the puzzle. And our job is to go in and put these pieces together and say, yes, that piece fits. That's that. I need that piece or that this part of what they're saying. But they're still they will still say some things that I'm like, what? Where did you how did you get that? But I'm not going to come on here and talk about another channel. And, and say, you know, I can disagree with something they've said, but I'm not going to sit here and call them out because I don't want them to lose any subscribers because there is a time coming when 
the bride will be taken away. The Bible was written to the bride. The Bible was written to the tribulation saint, which is a great multitude no man can count. How important do you think it is that some of the stuff in there is for them? And it was written to the Jew that they don't receive that mark and then they go into the millennium. There's only two groups going to heaven. That's the bride and that's the millennial, uh, sorry, the uh, tribulation saint. And so when God wrote the Bible, he wrote it to all of us. It is up to you and your discernment to figure out what part of it appeals to you. So <coughs> that's going to happen. Sorry. So that being said, for me, it is super important that I have tribulation saints listening to my videos. Why? They'll disagree with me. It's not a pre-tribulational rapture. Why are we upset at them for saying that? They are correct. It is not a pre-tribulational uh, pre rapture for them. They will not be taken out of here pre-tribulation. They will go through tribulation. How long, I don't know. Um, I've heard some people studying on this who are stating that, in fact, it will take three and a half years for them to be taken. I don't know. I. I I go back and forth on that one. Again, I believe I'm part of the first group that's going to pre-tribulational rapture. So I don't put a lot of study into that, but it might be a good idea for us to leave something behind for them. This event is going to take place very rapidly. I have heard some really good teaching, like the midnight cry. We all said it's midnight. I learned that from Dave Cole. It is not midnight. It is the midst of the night. This is why you see the veil rent in the midst in Luke, but you will see the veil <coughs> torn from top to bottom in both Mark and Matthew. So for us, it's in the midst of something. So we know now that that was a mistranslation, that was a misunderstanding. Steve Fletcher's making a video, or made a video. I'm gonna go back and listen to it later. So, now we know, what do we know now? We now know, we now know something very important, that it is not at midnight. <coughs> <coughs> I'm gonna try to hang on. If I can, it'll be a very short video. Um, The time that it's going to happen, we need to know what year, we need to know what day, and we need to know what time. Yes, we can know the year, the day, and the time. We know the time. The time it is going to happen is at nightfall in Israel, in the twinkling of an eye, in the midst of the day, in a moment in time where it changes from one day ending something major to another day beginning something major. For me and my studies, this day is March 16th. Now, Jesus also says, I might come sooner than you think, which is why the days that we're counting up to March 16th are super important. Purim is coming. It is also a kase. It is a day that we find out of time, it's 29th is a day that only happens once every four years. Then we have the year. I think that um, my friend Spinebreaker has figured that out. And I was just talking to him today about it. And he's found that Psalms 124 has a rapture event. Who, <clears throat> what calendar is Psalms 124 speaking to. On the Gregorian calendar, we are in the year 2024. We are not in the year 5784 <clears throat> or 5994 until we reach Rosh Hashanah, which we know God moved. Now, excuse me, I'm, I'm, ha I'm trying to keep it together. Rosh Hashanah, 
Now, can God change? Can God change? There is a psalm that I heard Dave read that says God can't change. He won't change. He's not going to change who he is. He's not going to do an evil thing. He will allow evil to happen because there is evil in this world, but he's not going to be the one to do it. All good things come from the Lord. That's not what that verse is saying, that he can't change. He said it very clearly. I am tired of these people. I want to wipe them off the face of the earth, but I repented. He changed. He changed his mind. Re to repent is not to, oh, I sinned five minutes ago. I'm going to repent. Oh, I did this. I got to repent. I got to write this down because I have to go to repent. That's insane. You'll be spinning around like crazy because that's what repent actually means. It means to turn. You'll be doing all that. Have you ever just spun around? I did it when I was a kid. I don't dare do it now. I'll be on the ground. Um, you can't turn from sin. You turn to Jesus and you focus on him and you will notice as you become saved uh, that sin will begin to flee from you. It won't be as... Um, palatable as it was. <coughs> I hope I can hold this together. Let me get into the videos. I want, I just want to hammer this home that though the last part of me, and I got off into a sidetrack. Sorry about that. Spinebreaker and I were speaking today, and or was it last night? The days are running into each other from being sick. Um, Psalms 83 war. I said, what if since it's still 5783, and it will be until Rosh Hashanah on March 17th. What if Psalms, and we are in the year 50, like, oh, did I just say that? 50, <coughs> 5783 or 5993, whatever, the 210 lost years, 5993. Um, and again, God allowed all these things to happen. Satan did all this to the calendars to confuse us. And Boy, is it confusing. Everybody is confused about the timeline and the calendars. And do I follow the moon? Do I start it on uh, the equilox, uh, equilox, the equinox? Do I start it when the sun's in there? There's just there's so much confusion around it. This is not a salvational issue. It is not. Your salvation is in Jesus Christ. It doesn't say your salvation is in Jesus. Oh, and the day. You must know that. And no, that's not it. The salvation is in Jesus and Jesus alone. So don't stress yourself over, wow, that person's so much smarter than I am. If you'll look and study, you'll find that you have a piece of that puzzle. You yourself has a piece of the puzzle. At any rate, but Spinebreaker's starting to work on this. Uh, it was paramount what he found about the Psalms 124 being connected to the Gregorian calendar of the year 2024. We are in that now. Now he's working on Psalms 83. Psalms 83, as you know, we're just cruising along, right? If the year changed in September and became 5784, Psalms 83 wouldn't fit. And October the 7th would not have fallen in, 20, in, uh, in the year 5783. It would have fallen 5784. Should we believe that it is the year 5784 right now, that war occurred on October the 7th after September the 15th when they said was Rosh Hashanah and the turn of the 5784. They were wrong. It couldn't have been, or the Bible is wrong. The Bible clearly says the Psalms 83 war happened uh, in, a, in, in, in uh, 5783 or 5993, however you want to. That's why those 210 years were lost. God allowed it so it would line up. So 57, I'm getting confused, 5783. It did, it's still 5783, and it will be until March 17th. Otherwise, October 7th did not happen in 5783 for the 57 for the Psalms 83 war. You see what I'm saying? It's for me, <clears throat> and I got to be careful with saying things like this because I hear other channels doing it. I don't understand why well, you can't understand this. 
this is my understanding. This is my piece of the puzzle that I've come out here willingly to share with you. And for you, one of you out there, and honestly, uh, Patrick over at End Times, End Time. <laughs> Sorry, Patrick. <laughs> There's so many End Times. I just I, I lost it. But I will. Uh, I I might actually have you in one of the pictures here. Um, is that End Time Watchmen? It's End Time Studies. No, that's the website for uh, Sister Sandy. Eh, sorry, sorry about that, Patrick. But anyway, he comes along and he starts studying. It. And now he has a mind similar to mine, where he sees these numbers, but he does a different. Uh, mine's just calendar, but he does a different thing where he does math. He's like, wait a second, <clears throat> all of this lines up. You can't call. Um, Passover on April 23rd, when you clearly said that the flood happened on October the 31st. When you count those 150 days from when the flood began, the Bible is abundantly clear. Why can't you understand this? 150 days later, you land on the cross on March 30th. You count back 14 days. You land on March 17th. For me, it's as, ba it's, it's as simple as... Putting peanut butter on a piece of bread. For me, it's that simple, you know? Um, for, <coughs> for me, it's as simple as uh, talking without coughing. <coughs> I'm going to keep going. Anyway, so I got all that out of the way to get to the uh, thing. I, I, I just I want to reassure you because I, I, I feel like what's happening with watchers that have figured something out that the Holy Spirit has led them to. There is this amount of pride that comes in stating, I'm so smart. God has enlightened me and not you. And that's absolutely incorrect. Look for your gift. You have it. You have a piece of that puzzle. Go to where your strength is and tell everyone. Put it in the comment section. Come into Discord. I might not even understand it, but you'll never see me go in there and say, you're wrong. I, I, I will always lean towards my timeline, you know, because I believe that's accurate. Dr. Barry. Um, but well, let's watch that guy. But that's, for me, that's my strength. Garrett, the news guy. Oh, maybe I can find him on here. Sorry about that, Garrett. Where is he at? Did he make a video? He needs to make more videos. Patrick, make more videos. I don't know where he's at. And I haven't, I don't know how to look him up on this thing. Animal chiropractor? What? I don't know. Let me go back. To my library. End time. End time. Man, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, uh, so find your strength because you have one. Find your piece of the puzzle because you have one. Share it. And if nobody understands, it doesn't matter. You shared it. Your salvation is in Jesus, not in your piece of the puzzle. Your piece of the puzzle basically uh, amounts to uh, when you go out and share it and share about Jesus and and and. and worry about other people's salvation other than your own, you are building your crown in heaven. So let me get to the picks. We're going to start up here. I just want to show you really quickly where we are. Uh, we are here. We're coming up on Purim. Purim is and always has been 11 months and 11 days. From the head of the year, leaving about 20 days left in the year. Okay? 20 days. From February, is it 20? No, it's not because February is a shorter month. It's, uh, what is that, 18 days? Something like that, 17 days. Anyway, well, it would be 17 days because it's March 17th. What am I thinking? So Purim this year, remember Purim is the only feast that I have found where there are three days uh, tagged to it 
but only one day celebrated. There are other feasts that are one day, but they tack other days onto it. This is the only one feast that I can find where it names the 13th, 14th, and 15th of Adar. And that's another pet peeve of mine. There is no second Adar. It doesn't exist. It's nowhere in the Bible. There is no passage anywhere that says, let's go another month. This was man-made, or this is that part of that, hey, we're just going to change the calendars. The calendar is as solid, rock solid, and it doesn't change any more than your birthday. Purim will always be on Adar 14th on February the 29th. But Purim, again, has three days wide because God knew that on this day, February 28th, there would be a February the 29th. It would happen every four years. At any rate, Purim, 11 months, 11 days from the head of the year of March 17th. It must fall 30 days before Passover. To be Shavat, Festival of Trees, must fall 30 days before Purim. It must. Shavat 15, Adar 14, Nisan 14. But it doesn't. They, they've they changed the calendar. So Purim is coming up. Now, there's a few little interesting tidbits. I think that Steve Fletcher is on February the 17th, which is a DAR 3. And I will, I believe I've, I've uh, taken a picture of uh, in the Bible why a DAR 3 is very important, February the 17th. The next one after that is February the 21st. This is the day Moses is born and he dies. He dies on the same day he was born. He dies just prior to them going into the promised land. Now, he could not go into the promised land. His brother Aaron, I don't believe, went into the promised land. I, I have to study that, but I don't believe Aaron went into the promised land or his sister. Um, uh, sister, I don't recall her name, but I, I have it on another picture. So February the 21st is another important day. Now, maybe we see something huge like October 7th event happen on February the 17th. We did see in Israel a white rainbow. They're super rare, and they're saying it's a sign from God happen in Israel. And I also have a picture of that, which I'll get to in a moment. So God is sending us these signs. In the end, Amos 3, 7 will be fulfilled by God. None of us goofballs out here <laughs> trying to figure this out. Um, we're going to get close. But at the end, when an October, look, October the 7th, I had it on here. As a matter of fact, that night I went to sleep, I told myself, I, I don't understand, Lord. I figured you would send us something. I went to sleep that night, and in the morning when I woke up, uh, they were they had been attacked at 6 a.m. I have to go to sleep because I work. They were attacked at 6 o'clock in the morning. This is right here on my timeline. This is the day that Tabernacles, the last day of Tabernacles, right there. So we come back over here. So I would suspect, now we saw a white rainbow, right? I don't recall what day that was. Was it February 7th or was it, I, I have a picture. I have to look. So will we see something alerting us to something on Adar 3, February the 17th, or Adar 7th when Moses died? Or will we see something on Purim, Adar 14, February the 28th, 29th now? It moved a day because uh, it must fall 30 days before the Passover before the cross. All right, let me get to the next pick. <coughs> I've said this before. I've showed this before. Does God change? No, he doesn't. But he made it super clear in Exodus 12 that he moved the head of the year. Uh, he said this now is the head of the year. This is the first month, the first of months to you. God did change that. It didn't doesn't mean God changed. He doesn't change. But for this, he moved the head of the year. Why? Let me ask you a question. The seven feasts, are they Jewish or are they gods? The answer is they are gods. 
these feasts belong to God. When we are in heaven, we will celebrate these feasts throughout the year. It'll be just like now where you're off work and you will take time off for Christmas. You will take time off for Thanksgiving, Fourth of July. There's all these holidays that we look forward to. We will look so much more forward to these seven feast days in heaven uh, once we get there, right? These are feast days unto the Lord, not unto the Jew. Just because the Jews celebrated it and we don't doesn't mean that we won't. When did they come out? They came out before creation. They were always in play. When did we get them? We got them from Moses. God gave them to Moses. Did he give them to Adam? No. Did he give them to Noah? No. They came out with Moses. That's when they came. That's when we found out about them as a, a human species, the human race found out about it then. So what did God change? Did he change all the feast days? Did he change Feast of Trumpets? No. Feast of Trumpets was enacted in, in was it Numbers or Deuteronomy? It was enacted after he moved the head of the year. He moved Rosh Hashanah back six months. This now is ahead of your year. He established that. He did that on purpose. The very first law he handed down, he did it on purpose. When was the head of the year previous to that? What well, was September the 15th? What now we call, but they still call, they didn't pay attention, they still call it Rosh Hashanah. It is not Rosh Hashanah. It was moved back six months. What we now call on September the 15th is the Feast of Trumpets. That law or that Feast came out, given to Moses after he gave, after he moved Rosh Hashanah. That's the only one that was moved. Nothing else was moved. Everything else is as solid as your birthday. Your birthday is always going to be on a day, not the same day every year because of our calendar and the way it is, but your birthday of whatever day it is, July 17th. That just came to mind, but that's the... Uh, Emoji they use for everything, 717. Um, that day will never change. It will always be on that day. The same thing with Jesus. He was born at nightfall on September the 29th. That's when he was born. He was conceived on Christmas Day. How do I know that? Because I have, and, and again, and I say this a hundred times, I had no preconceived notions or reasons to force any of these dates. I simply wanted to know when they were. That was my prayer. Lord, just show me when they are. I don't, I don't have any preconceived ideas as to when they should be. I just want to know when. And there are four events that must happen in a baby's life. Must be conceived. Must attach to a uterine wall. So there would have to be an event for that. Must be born. And then he must be circumcised eight days later. If you don't have all four of those happen in a 40-week period, God doesn't cut anything short. He doesn't cut the time you spent in the, in the tomb short. That's why he was there for 84, day, uh, 84 days, 84 hours. He was there from Wednesday. And he rose Sunday morning before sunrise. He spent a complete three days and three nights, just like the Bible said. Even though he went the cross on uh, died on the cross on a Wednesday three o'clock in the afternoon that day didn't count even though he rose on Sunday uh, he rose before sunrise so that night was not complete God completes everything so it's Wednesday through Saturday and then Sunday morning he rose after after nightfall could have been any time right but he rose <clears throat> that's why 84 is found so much in the Bible um, with the uh, the old widower that was in there giving money, and she was 84 years old. It's a representation of Jesus. Okay, sorry, let me get back to this. So, Rosh Hashanah has been moved, not Feast of Trumpets. When was it moved? Right there. Exodus 12. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. <coughs> he is clearly telling us that he's moved Rosh Hashanah. Now, if you tell me that the rapture is going to be on Rosh Hashanah, I will not look to September the 15th because that is Feast of Trumpets. That is not Rosh Hashanah on September the 15th. March the 17th is Rosh Hashanah. Later on, you see here in Leviticus, later on, the Feast of Trumpets. This is when he brought out the Feast of Trumpets. This is September the 15th. He has removed Rosh Hashanah from this day and moved it back six months. And later on, way down in Leviticus, the next chapter, he uh, calls that same exact day now the Feast of Trumpets. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial, a blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein, but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And you can see Exodus was first. That's where he moved it. Leviticus was second. This is when we gained all seven feasts. All seven feasts came out in Leviticus. Everybody says, well, it has to happen on Feast of Trumpets because that's when they blow trumpets. Not so. The shofar is a musical horn typically made of a ram's horn. Jewish law requires that the shofar be blown 30 times on each day of Rosh Hashanah. <clears throat> they are not blowing the trumpets because it's the Feast of Trumpets, although they do blow the trumpets on the Feast of Trumpets. They are blowing the trumpets because it's Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is the only Jewish holiday that is two days. Long both inside and outside, Israel is called Arikta, translated a long day, because the 48 hour celebration may be thought of as one extended day. Tim Foster made a post, and again, I've been sick for a few days, so I don't recall. Uh, why did I highlight this? What did you say, Tim Foster, that caught my attention? Oh, this is where we see the third of Adar, and it caught my attention uh, that he had posted this. We learn from the sixth chapter of Ezra that the second temple was completed and finished on the third day of Adar. This date has gone unnoticed by me and just thought today, uh, just today I stumbled across it here. And here's, here's where you see it. Now, I always go to the Bible. Just to make sure that there's no misunderstanding. In, oh, and this house was finished on the third day of the month Adar, which was in the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. So the third day of Adar. Now I showed that to you. I don't know how far I am from. Okay, let me just show you again what day that is and why. I thought it cool that he found that. It's right there. That's the day Moses was born and died. I've had this, I've had this date on here for a couple years now, I believe. Or no, Moses, why do I have a Dar 3 on there? Moses is February 24th, Dar 7. There's another phantom date I have up there. Huh. I don't know why. Uh, maybe I just put it on there. So I would have to say that's the day the temple was complete, is a Dar 3. That's interesting. Okay, I had it on there, I just didn't remember why. All right, let me go back to here, here. Psalms 120. Oh, this is Spinebreaker working on the Psalms 124. Our soul escaped like a bird. It is past tense. Our soul escaped like a bird. Psalms 124, 7. And I've asked him, or we've talked about it, and I think he's going to work on uh psalms 83 to relate it to um the year 5783 
And yes, we're still in the year 5783. Couldn't be 5784. It wouldn't line up with Psalms 83. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. This is a past tense um, passage right here, right? It's past tense, 124. We are in 124. Do we know what month? We know what, or day. Do we know what day yet? We know, we believe we're in the correct year with this finding from Swinebreaker. 2024. I believe it's going to happen at sunset in Israel. A lot of passages speak to the twinkling of an eye. and This happens at sunset. We were a little confused by the midnight cry, only to find out from Dave that that's a mistranslation. Uh, it actually means the word myths, not midnight. <coughs> I showed you this before from the Revelation 12 sign on September the 23rd. The next day is the 24th. You count six years, six months, and six days, and you will land on the cross of March 30th. March 30th, of course, is 150 days after the flood began, which is accurate. April the 23rd is not accurate. It is That would make it another 23 days. It would make it 173 days. It's, it's just not Biblical to, to look at it that way. Um, March 30th. Okay, so I just decided, well, let's do some math. Let's let's see what happens if we do some math on the 1,260 days from the cross. <clears throat> and we see that uh, it lands on September the 11th. September the 11th is the day of creation. Uh, William Pierce had a good video. Uh, American Prophecy, again, it's been a few days. I've been sick. I don't recall what he said, but it was a very good video. I would go watch it. Uh, I love his, his demeanor when he's teaching. Um, February the 29th, which is Purim. 40 days later. This is your sign of Jonah, by the way. 40 days after Purim is when that eclipse is going to happen. To me, this is the day that Jonah walks into the city and says, in yet 40 days, God will destroy the city. Did God change his mind? He said he was going to do something. Is there something wrong where God decided not to do it? And the answer is no. God is God. He knew the end from the beginning. He knew that this threat would make them change their ways. They would go and do the right thing. They would turn to him. That's the point of tribulation. The fear of tribulation and tribulation is to drive people to their knees to recognize who Jesus was, who he is, why he came here, what he did for all of us. There are people walking around literally making the claim there is no God. You just, you're just making this Bible story thing up. He doesn't exist. And, of course, I'm flabbergasted by that idea. Where do they get that? But then again, I'm saved. Of course I would. So what do we do? We teach with love. and We, we tell them. <coughs> <coughs> There's a moment coming where we're going to disappear. And I want you to know that God still loves you. Satan's going to come at you and tell you a lie. He's going to tell you, well, he took his people and left you guys here. That's it. It's over with. Don't kneel down to a guy that just left you here. He must not love you. He left you here. And that's not what it's about. It's about they should know that if you see me go, that God does love them and that God is going to come back and take them. They can't take the mark. They have to repent which means turn to jesus and start studying and trying to figure their time out and imagine they have a much better we've had two thousand years to try to understand this there's so many calendars and so many wrong dates but these guys are going to have a very firm date on the moment that the rapture occurred the very second the rapture occurred they're going to know right now they don't right now they have no clue yeah that keeps happening all right Matthew 25, 6. Why did I highlight this? And 
oh, that's the midnight cry. And th this is the, the verse that everybody jumps to thinking it's midnight. That word midnight there. I wonder if I, did I go look that up? No, I, ah, there he is. End time watchman. Oh, sorry about that, Patrick. Um, at midnight, there was a cry. That word midnight is mistranslated. That is the midst of the night, which is sunset in Israel. So I think we know the time. I think we know the year. Now we're trying to figure out the day. Are we saying we've got it figured out yet? No, we, we don't have it figured out yet. Uh, I wish I did. I'd be running to this thing going, I figured it out, but I haven't figured it out yet. This is the kind of stuff that uh, Patrick does, and he's, he's in the Discord, and uh, he's really uh, fun to have in there. And he said, I found something really interesting. These are the dates of the deaths of Miriam, Aaron, and Moses. Remember, Moses was 120 when he died. Aaron. <laughs> was 123 when he died. And Miriam was 127 when she died. Miriam died on Nisan 10. What day is that? Does everybody know what Nisan 10 represents? The triumphant entry. Aaron dies on the first of all. What day is that? That's the day Moses threw the tablets down. He chucked the tablets down on Aaron's birthday. And then Moses is a Dar 7, which I showed you as uh, being, uh, uh, what was that, February the 21st, I believe. Now, I don't, I think they all died within the same year. I don't think they died three and a half years apart, but their ages of death show a seven-year tribulation, don't they? I thought that was incredible what he found. Moses would represent the end of the 120. 20th Jubilee, possible date of rapture or start of tribulation. From Moses to Aaron, now this is this is not how far apart they died. This is how the age difference they were. Aaron was his older brother. We know that. He was three years older. I did not know Miriam was four years older than Aaron. I didn't know that. Or seven years older than Moses. I did not know that. But again, I still think they all died. In that year, from Nisan to Av to Adar, I think all three of them died. And I believe Mar Mar Miriam, and, and again, I'm not sure. Aaron didn't go across, right? <clears throat> Aaron didn't go across. So uh, I believe they, and, and I don't think anybody that was over the age of 20 went across. So I'm pretty sure that Miriam would have died on Nisan 10, uh, the same year that Moses died. Uh, you know, because again, remember the year changed changed on Nissan 1, and all the way down to Adar 7, it would have still been the same year. Anyway, I thought that was pretty cool information. You found. Remember, therefore, how that has received and heard and old fast and repent, means turn to Jesus. If therefore you shall not watch, I will come upon thee a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I come upon thee. That's Revelation 3.3. 3. Kind of saying, if you do watch, you're going to know. And here's Surely the Lord God will do it. See, we're going to see something huge, like October the 7th. How much of the world re recognize October the 7th as a sign from God that this is ramping up and it's about to happen? Almost no one. All of us went running to our phones and, and computers and uh, made videos. And uh, all of you ran to your phones and your computers and your television and said, I, I got it. This is important. I got to find out if somebody else agrees with me. Does somebody else see what I'm seeing here? The answer was what? Yes, the, all, all the body came together uh, and recognized, hey, this was a big deal. This was a huge deal that just happened, right? So at the, end of the, at the end of the day, God is going to pull another October the 7th. He is going to do that. And we are going to be galvanized. Trust me. Trust me, when a major event happens, something that's biblical, something we've been looking for, we are all going to run to our uh, YouTubes and, and uh, Rumbles and BitChute or whatever else they, they use. We're all going to run to those, and we're going to give you our synopsis on what we think is the day of the rapture. Still, it won't be thus saith the Lord, right? Not until an angel appears at the foot of my bed, I will say that. But 
we're going to have a much tighter grasp on when exactly it's going to happen, you know, and it's going to be, it's going to be epic. It's going to be absolutely epic the day that that happens. So, all right. Oh. <clears throat> For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall, oh, uh, I think this was Patrick again. I don't recall, but he found more verses that says that God is going to tell us. And I, I knew about those two in Revelation and Amos, and then I believe he alerted me to these. Was it Patrick? I, I don't recall now. Again, sick. Don't remember much. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. So we're going to know. We're going to see an October 7th event again, <coughs> and we're going to know. We know we're still in the year 5783 and not the year 5784. This is the Psalms 83 war, which could only occur in 5783, and it happened in October after September, meaning the year did not change in September. It is going to change in March. And again, for there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. Pharisees seek a sign. Uh, okay. Oh, that's the sign of Jonah. Those 40 days from, uh, from what I showed you uh, up to the... Uh, October 8th, of, uh, no, the uh, April 8th event of the eclipse, right? The 40 days, the sign of Jonah. And so the Pharisees came, this is, you find this in Mark 8, 11, and the Pharisees came forth and began to question with him, seeking of him a sign from heaven, tempting him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and saith, why doth this generation seek after a sign? Verily, what generation? our generation which is our generation this is after the rapture this is after the rapture we're all seeking for something right now they will not get in anything else once the rapture occurs they will have the sign of jonah why doth this generation seek after a sign verily i say unto you there shall no sign be given unto this generation and he left them, and entering into the ship, again departed the other side. And then here we find in Matthew, a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. There shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left. Luke, you notice this says, Pharisees and Sadducees seek a sign. Pharisees seek a sign. Interpreting the present time, you find this in Luke, and he said also to the people, when ye see the clouds rise out of the west, straight away ye say, there cometh a shower, and so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, there will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it you cannot discern the time? We can. October the 7th. We can. We know it's coming. October the 7th happened. We know it's nearly here. He's speaking here in Luke to them, to those people. He's not speaking to the Luke group. Over here, the sign given to them was Jonah. <coughs> Sorry. All right. The new timeline Sandy put together, um, she didn't, uh, she, she's, she may be, uh, I haven't talked to her in a few days, but you can see here, I want to go over that, uh, and this is me, and I would ask, uh, I would ask uh, Patrick if uh, he could verify if I'm right. Uh, these are not three and a half years apart. They all died within the same year. I would imagine that Miriam dies at the age of 127. <clears throat> on Nisan 10, which is March 26, the day of the triumphal entry. Now, these dates could have landed anywhere. It could have landed on October, yeah, I'm sorry, March the 28th, and it would have meant nothing. Could have landed on, you know, March the 22nd, it would have meant nothing. 
but it didn't. It landed on March the 26th. Jesus triumphant entry. He had to go into the temple four days prior to his crucifixion. We also read that he had a meal with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus six days prior to the crucifixion. And then there's this other story about him being in this in the Pharisee's house, the one that was leprous, leprous that he had cured, whom they didn't serve him anything. Remember, Martha was running around getting everything served. So he was being served in uh, Lazarus' house. But the next day, we eat every day, right? We sometimes eat two or three times a day, don't we? Well, we usually do here. So the next day in the Pharisee's house, a leprous Pharisee who was cured by God himself, couldn't so much as serve Jesus anything, not even a drink of water. He had him there as a spectacle. And somebody was there washing his feet or Mary was there. I don't recall. Uh, I don't recall uh, if they named her or not. That had to have been the next day, but it was not, it was had to have been one day before his triumphant entry because she was anointing his head. All right. You go on down. Mary of Dias. Now let's go on down here and let's find out when. Um, Aaron dies. Let's see up here. Aaron dies and he dies at the age of 123. I don't think it was three and a half years later, but it, he dies at the age, but it is three and a half years um, <coughs> for the tribulation. But Aaron dies. The ages of them are so telling. Aaron dies here. The day Moses, did I do that right? Is it the day Moses? Uh, yeah. She didn't put the date. I, I Yeah. Was it? Uh, of one, I believe it was of one, July 16th. That's the day Moses broke the uh, the tablets. He threw them down on Aaron's birthday. And then we come on down here. Just before they cross over into the promised land, we see that. And I've already, I already had this on here. I knew that Moses was born and dies at the age. Of, well, you saw it on my other timeline. He was 120. He dies on... Uh, Adar 7, which is February the 21st. Okay. March 26th. Why did I do this? March 26th to June 16th. Oh, this is the, uh, this is the distance between um, Miriam. She dies. That's her name, by the way. I had forgotten it before. Miriam dies on March the 26th, the triumphant entry. And it's 83 days until her brother Aaron, her younger brother Aaron, dies at the age of 123 on June the 16th, which is the day that, uh, and again, how do these keep landing so perfectly on the timeline? How do they keep landing perfectly? Uh, he die, uh, uh, Aaron dies on June 16th, the day Moses throws the tablets down. Of course, it's the anniversary. It happened before, but this is the same day. 83 days. <clears throat> from Aaron dying to Moses dying on February the 21st, from the day that Moses threw down the tablets, or the anniversary of, to the day that Moses dies, or the anniversary thereof, 251 days. I don't know if this means anything to Patrick, but I, I did this math. And then from February the 21st, the day that Moses dies, back to, of course, it, she's already dead, but the, the Miriam already died. But from the time Moses died going forward to see when the like a circular event, March 26, it was 35 days. That completes 365 days. Now, you add those numbers up, it comes up to 300. And, uh, I forget what it was, 89. That's because I've shared days. March 26 to June 16th, I counted June 16th. I counted June 16th here to the 21st. I counted the 21st here. To the 26th, so that's where you get the extra three days from when you add those numbers up. Deuteronomy 34, and the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. Right? Thirty days. 
I had that on there for a reason. Let me let me see if I can remember. Thirty days. February the twenty first. Thirty days. Um. February the twenty first. I don't know why I put that on there. Thirty days. I will have to go research that as to why I put that on there because that would be three weeks until March 16th, March 17th. We have to, uh, I'll have to go back and study that and see why I did that. I'll have to figure out why I put that in there. I was delirious. <laughs> All right. Now, now, after the death of Moses, a servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, into the land which I do give unto them. So 30 days after Moses died, they crossed over into the land. Yeah, that's what I need to study. I, I, I took a picture because I need to study it. But February the 21st <coughs> would be... 30 days would be something like, what did that be, March? Well, that's 35 days, so it would be March 21st, it would seem. What's March 21st? What does March 21st come up to? Lazarus was resurrected. So that's something I need to study to try to uh, figure out. I was on a, on a rabbit trail there, and uh, I'm not sure I didn't finish it. <laughs> So the typical period of mourning is seven days. We see that when Mary and Martha bury Lazarus, they are unclean for seven days. But for a national leader, it's built up to 30 days. So it says here very clearly that they mourned him for 30 days. But the Bible says there is a mourning period of seven. So I got to work on that. That's what I was working on. Oh, there's that white rainbow in Israel. Something else, isn't it? There was several other pictures. I just highlighted that one. This person here, truth, love, light. They're actually, I, I, I took a picture of this because I was the number 11,111 views. And it was 11 hours ago. I said, okay, <laughs> that's too much of a coinky dink there. I need to take a picture of that. But they did a very good video here. The great end of days matchup in the heavens to blow your socks off. And it was a very good video. I liked it. And uh, all right. So um, I made it through, surprisingly. A few coughs. The Internet is fixed. It's uh, We switched providers, and it's very fast now. So uh, if I did a – if I turned – I don't know if I'm if I can uh, – I don't know if I can. I'm, I'm pretty beat. I might just uh, post this. Uh, probably will just post this. And uh, – couple more days of recovery, maybe tomorrow or the next day, and uh, I'll keep researching that 30 days. It's got to make sense to me as to if he died on February the 21st, 30 days later they crossed over. That has to make sense as to uh, as to when it lands. We know it was a Dar 7 uh, because I think, the, I think well, it would have to be in the Bible if I wrote it down, but I found it over a year ago, so I have to go back and restudy that. Or anybody else that can study that and find out that lands on March 21st. That's strange to me. That's strange uh, to line it up with uh, with uh, what did it line up to? Triumphant entry, right? No, no, the 26th is triumphant entry. Anyway, I'll keep working on that part uh, to make well, not to make, just to see to show how the dates will line up when they crossed over. I would think that they would have crossed over um, on March 17th, the head of the year, right? But I'm not sure. I'll have to go study that. Maybe some of you have some insight. You come into Discord and give me some ideas on that. So, all right. I got to go sit down. Repo Man 64. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Be of good cheer. Hang in there. Studying. And 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 searching and keep a tight grip on your piece of the puzzle. Uh, remember, Jesus is what saved. <coughs> Jesus is what saves us, not this knowledge. 
this is this is a gift uh, that that we're able to be involved in any of this. Honestly, you know, it's so fantastic that we're able to be even involved in all of this. And so, just keep watching and hang in there. Uh, the moment is coming, and like the Bible says, it might be sooner than you think. Snap, and we're gone. You know, so just keep watching. All right, talk with you again later.